right, just different. Hopeless at one point and they have an opportunity to make you go harder, make you get in that booth and just really express that hopelessness. Like, man, y'all don't understand. This is like, you know what I mean? You dig from a different place. That, that bottom of your soul, that pit, um, where, your, where, where you felt like the shit was... Shit, if in your mind it ain't gon' happen, shit, it probably won't I took some risks, some people probably won't That's how we're grateful for the fruits of all my labor Hard to live and know you sick, I'd rather be with my creator Think the time's up Alright, welcome back to another episode of Foreign Sight Podcast This is your host, Mike Ogie It's your boy, London Ogletree, back for some more gems What's up, my guy? Not much, man. You know what it is. It's just another week in the books. Another week. Another, another week, another day. Yeah. Is it me or is this time change kind of messing you up? Just a tad. It gets dark real quickly. Like, uh, I'll finish work and then, like, literally after about 30 minutes, it's already getting dark. By the time I get to the gym, I'm like, damn. It's horrible. I'm like, I get to the gym and, like, I'm walking in when it's, like, kind of coming down. Like, and I'm like, this is crazy. So, when you, like kind of almost done you like have i been here for three hours or have i been here for an hour right and like i look over the clock and i'm like oh it's only six or it's only seven i'm like damn all right well and my question is this when we first went to alpha land mm-hmm. was it because it was still the clocks went back still at that time too mm-hmm. did it feel weird it didn't feel weird for me when they uh, did that last year but this nah. year i just feel off no nah, but i think by that time because i mean this is january so i think we had probably got used to daylight savings time being it was right after christmas right after new year so all that yeah they stuff kind of made it a little bit easier for us to kind of get in that's true okay you know what i'm yeah. saying right now that's we're at an awkward time it's like november and then on top of that it's starting to get cold now like now it's starting to feel like not when like semi fall you know what i'm saying so i think all of that oh. all these adaptations are starting to add up but <laughs> nonetheless you know, another week in the books busy lives but you know trying to truck along and uh, i have a good we have a good episode this week actually this is fan inspired um and i think as we close in on this final part of the season you know we're trying to just, just finish up on a high note and on a real note um I, I think where we'll take this and what we'll start off is just you know you and i have both been transparent about our ambition towards trying to seek wealth trying to make good money you know generational money um, just on that alone, you know, talk about where your mind is at as far as you trying to accumulate wealth and where that came from and, and what is your motivation in wanting to uh, acquire those things. It kind of sounds funny. Um, and it's not a it's not a knock, but everybody probably knows now since I started the podcast that I'm I'm originally from Detroit. So I got a lot of family members that are in poverty. But like to me, I be growing up seeing it a lot. I didn't know that was poverty at the time. So like it was, it was kind of use. I was like, this is. I thought life was just that's how it was. I never saw the other side, which was Katy, really. And like I've seen the suburbs in Michigan, but it was never Katy. Mm-hmm. So my point was like, I always knew I wanted to be successful. I just never knew how I was going to do it. So it really didn't click to me, and t- honestly, to become like a grown man until like COVID. So when COVID hit, I was like, I know I want to make money, but you kind of in that phase where it's like, you got a college, COVID hit, uh, it's a pandemic and can't get no job. So you got to figure out a way to, I think that's when my hustle mentality came in the most. So after that happens, I had like two or three jobs. I had my own company that I was trying to build up um, with meal prepping. Um, Then everything else just went in the right direction. So after that, I just kind of knew what I wanted to do. And I knew I just wanted to make sure that my family back in Michigan, where it could be cousins, could be mom, could be dad, um, friends, um, potentially at that time I didn't have a girlfriend, but like whoever I did meet, I want to make sure I could provide for them. If I could provide for the people that I love and my friends, then I think that's just what make me satisfied. So that's why I go hard. So when I got this new role where I'm at now, you, I did kind of step back and got complacent and I kind of was happy with what I had because something that I a lot of people struggle with in, in this generation that's a gift and a curse. I think we're more hustlers than the last generation. They're more like comfortable with being like construction workers, this and this, which is fine. It's nothing wrong wrong with that. And they could be fine with making 80, 70,000, 100,000 be fine. I think people in our generation, a lot of us want to be millionaires. So I was kind of stuck in that lane. Like I just got to keep going. So now when I am where I'm at now, I do really well. I do better than the average person in the U.S. 
Um, but for me, it was appreciating what you got and cherish those moments and don't overthink that. So to kind of answer your question, it was just simply because I want to make sure my family's happy and I can provide for people and have fun trips and stuff like that. Before I go, I actually have a follow up based on what you said. You said that you feel like our generation is more of a hustler generation, right? I would argue if you ask people older than us, they'll they'll say that we're lazier and that we want to take the easy route, you know, because everybody, they, what they look at, what they see, what I hear, everybody's trying to be an influencer and influencer is largely kind of the new rap culture, right? The influencer is the new rapper or the new NFL after the new NBA after you see the NBA and the NFL and like all the sports. I think what happens there is that people look at that and say, well, there has to be some level of genetic luck that goes into it. But we're becoming an influencer. It's a matter of who can build the best content, who can build the best following, who can bust the algorithm, so to speak, who can go viral the quickest. And so I think people are looking at that and saying, I'm trying to bust there. Right. And so, I would say that the older generation say, you guys don't want to go to school. You guys don't want to work. You guys don't want to build a career. Everybody's trying to go viral on social media, right? And that, to me, they'll say is us being lazy and not wanting to work for what we want in life. So to that assertion, what do you say? Um, They're they're correct and they're not correct. If you ask an old person to tell you the time, they're going to tell you how they built the watch, in my opinion. Like... <laughs> don't get me wrong they're they're right about what they're saying i think what they're right about is the fundamentals that we have to just get the basic money like they're we're lazy like we don't know how to cut grass we don't know how to fix things we don't know how to if if something goes out we want to go pay for something if we they grew up walking from bus station to this spot why why would you pay for wings that when you can go buy a sack of potatoes and some wings and save you about six to seven dollars and save about four or five times the four or five like times a week doing that you're going to save this amount of money. so they're just they're strategic with their dollars which is so smart a lot of people now i think sucks in like they can't manage their money correctly. So a lot of them are like, well, I'm just going to keep making more. So I don't got to really plan on managing. And that's just, I'm not saying everybody succeeds at that uh, method in this generation, but a lot of people are like, and there's more avenues to get money. Like, so now it's hard for a, a older person, but like, well, y'all don't work hard enough. Well, they can say, well, I'm an influencer. I do this. And I'm, this is my, if you tell them like posting content and you getting paid off of YouTube, Snapchat, this, they look at you crazy. So it's like you can do that and make more money than your parents ever did. But that's a hard pill for them to swallow. And there's a lot of people who are trying to be influencers of this and that who do have codes and stuff who don't make that much money, but they just want to have that image. So it's, they're, everybody's both right. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's just I, I think older people got to stop hating. I ain't gonna lie to you because sometimes they do hate. And uh, it's like y'all didn't have all the answers like you guys didn't make 300 400 500 thousand so it's like i get it, you were good and you want the best for me but what if i am right about this decision and then i don't do it because i want to make you guys so happy mm -hmm. and the fact that you're not believing in me kind of makes me like dang should i just shut this down and make y'all happy but at the end of the day you gotta go with your stomach and your heart is telling you and that is where it is that's where this generation takes off more than Old generation. Damn, boy, can't miss fitting bars this, this, this evening. Yeah. Like, damn. But, but, but you're 100 right, man. Like I love, I love that because at the end of the day, there's different ways it's gonna catch, especially with social media. Social media has given people more options. It doesn't mean that one way is the only way, right? So if someone wants to take that route, then that's by all means. Now, I think where where a person will be classified as a bum, in my opinion, is if you decide to say, I'm not going to work at all, meaning you have no source of income because you're banking on trying to become an influencer. That's where I'm like, okay, now nah, you still got to take care of what you got to take care of, right? You still got to do what you got to do as an adult. You still got to pay the bills. So you got to build it on the side. That's where you see. That's where we struggle. The hustler struggle comes for when you're tired. And, and we're both dealing with this. You and I are dealing with this right now. When you're tired because you are working a full-time job and then you're trying to build your hustle on the side, right? Whenever you're exhausted, but you still take the time to build that content, to take that content, to record that stuff on your side. At least, at least you're doing something productive and you're trying to build something rather than being out and you know doing stuff you're not supposed to be doing. So for me, that's where 
I'm like, nah, if someone's trying to build their following, by all means. If someone's trying to take off on social media as a means of making a side income, by all means, I'm all for that. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't want to take the school route. The school route's not for everybody. This just the social media route gave people an option. People are exploiting it. Some people went full fledged into it. They took the risk. So for those who, you know, go and get viral, I mean, they 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 put their neck out there and they got rewarded for it. For those who don't, they got to work a little harder. They got to believe in themselves a little bit more. And that's my opinion. Yeah, I think that's where the older generation succeeds so well on mm-hmm. is that like they they will be okay. They will have a day job. They will have a night job. They might have a weekend job. And you'd be like, you doing all this like for three, four years? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta make ends meet, and still I have to do stuff like Christmas, Thanksgiving, do things like that. So I have to live on a yearly basis to make sure that my kids have a somewhat decent childhood, and I'm living end to end. Like I saw this video of this uh, woman. She was talking about little baby came and gave her. She braided all his hair and his whole team's hair. And she, he was like, how many heads did you do? And she told him he just cut her a fat up like a fat check. And then she was like, you don't know how much you did for me. Cause I was working three or four jobs and then I was making in meets and you just helped me. So it's like, there's a lot of people back then who do that. And there's a lot of people who would just bank on the influencers and stuff. And if their parents is helping them, they would just be okay with that versus just saying like, I don't want my parents to help me for the rest of my life. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, I guess for me, where where I speaking for myself, where I see money or how money changed for me was like I was always I would say that it's interesting because growing up, I was I've seen people who were impoverished and I've seen people who were well off, right? So I understood like, okay, what's different about this person versus that person? Why is this person wealthy and that person is? That's the type of questions I would ask myself. Main thing was I wasn't gonna let money like make me or turn me into a person or turn me into something I wasn't right it was like okay you need money to survive but you know what I'm saying how much money you need is all dependent on the person right then as I got older and I went through school like in my culture especially being African you know one of the things that causes a bit of fracture between like kids and their parents is like what career you choose to be in you ask most kids they would have told you some story about my parents wanted me or expecting me or were trying to force me to be a doctor engineer engineer yep. whatever case right and then when they don't do it, then they get looked down upon, right? My thing is, like, I get where they're coming from. They're coming from a good place. But, you know, there are people who that's just not what their purpose in life is meant to be, right? So, it, it, like, for me, what happened was after I got out of school, I started seeing the reality of, like, needing money because bills start to pile up. Bills start to accumulate. So I'm like, okay, well, you need all these things, and all these things cost money. So where the hustle in me came from was just a matter of, look, I'm trying to get to a point where, I don't have to even look at the dollar figure. I can just be able to pay for it and I'll be able to take care of myself and my people. It's like you were talking about, right? And then being able to tackle as many industries as I can, like me having multiple hobbies I'm into. You know what I'm saying? I told you about that. It's like, if I can get it to where I can make all these things a, a lucrative, a profitable business, then that just shows that I'm successful in that. That's one less, that's one extra thing that I'm able to give people to game on. Like, hey, I made it here. I made it here. I made it here. And that's how you do it. That's that's for me what drives me is not just about the money, but about the impact of you know leaving a legacy behind in multiple different fields. No real stuff. Yeah. It just it's it can tear down a person so much by just listening to parents. But I'm glad I kind of just stopped listening after a certain point. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if I keep listening to y'all and y'all just lead me down the wrong path i know y'all not gonna bail me out so it's like i got i'm at least go on the route that i want to go and if i fail it's on me like i can't i can't just let you just i give you my parents but at the same time this is about to be the transition of how i become a man is i'm a better myself and thank god i've been right the whole time i bet on myself well there's also an aspect of you take more pride in it whenever it's you who put your name behind it Right. When I decided to, you know, switch majors, I talk about that being a symbolic point because it was me taking my life in my own hands. Right. And it, and it translates to everything else. Like why well, I decided not to go back to school because I wanted to do these things instead. It was, it was some doubt. It's still some doubt to this day. You know, like, oh, this motherfucker was deciding to be a bomb. He decided to take the easy way out. So now it's like, nah, I'm going to show y'all. Not just not for them, but for me, like, hey, this is why I did it. And this is why I'm bought into it. And I have more enthusiasm when I talk about the things I talk about. It's like, look, I chose to do this. I chose to put myself in this situation. I'm going to figure this out. And I'm going to take more pride in it because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the, this is the life I chose to live. It's and, and that's what people have to understand at the end of the day. It's their life. You only get to live it once, so don't live it for nobody else. Live it for yourself. 
and you'll be able to sleep more comfortably at night. You'll be able to have more peace of mind. You won't always be living thinking like, oh, I'm trying to do this for other people. I'm trying to appease somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what I believe in, what I stand on. Oh, uh, yeah. Definitely. You always stand on what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? Now, I think, though, what, what does tend to happen is many people, I think, hold this opinion that a person's value, at least to humanity, is tied to their monetary value, right? How much money you make dictates how much respect you earn or, you know, how much money you make dictates people's, you know, people's value of your credibility. So what do you stand on that? And why do you think it's a good or bad thing? It's a horrible thing, one. Um, but I think this is where, this is where I'm going I'm to use this, this conversation with older generation and new generation. That's where I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to say where the new generation, we fail at that tremendously because you got a lot of people just willing to rent cars, buy this or do this to please other people, to make them sound like they have, like, or have that view image of, I have clout. That makes them fulfilled in life because it's like, oh, this person on social media thinks I have clout. So I get people that every time I see me out or something, I'm at the gym, at the mall, they're like, oh, what's up, bro? Like, I guess that validates people. So having that does make people feel good having that money does put you in that position to make you feel good at the end of the day if you're just doing that and you're at ends meets by buying design or doing this technically is it worth it like is it worth kind of doing all that if you you're not really living how like you could buy that say you can buy all those things to kind of get you that image and get you that likeness but you're living at the end of the day you got like two 150 dollars in your check after every month of paying all your bills and expenses and you just have that remaining every month, that's not a good feeling. Cause like now you have to bill for your, uh, your retirement. And when uh stuff gets for like 60, 65 or whatever, hopefully 55, 60, then you will have a lot of cushion, but you might not have cushion. So I just be thinking like that. So uh, I think that's what the generation messed up tremendously with that. Is it worth it? Here's what I think is starting to become the case. I think people value experience and value social validation more than they value being financially free or being you know comfortable right if i got the experience or if i can at least give off the look of me who is a person who made it and people come they adore me they give me flowers whatever and public while i see them maybe that's what people value more than having enough money in their check you know i'd rather you know do what i do to have these experiences you know, and then maybe I struggle a little bit on the finances, but at the end of the day, people remember me, people like me, you know what I'm saying? Maybe people's mentality and that's what their motivation is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm just saying there, there could be, especially with social media being such a factor, maybe people just want that cloud, especially if they were a person who didn't get it when they were younger or, you know, they, they need some type of void be to be filled. You know what I'm saying? That's the way they feel it. You know, it's almost like a yeah. drug. You know what I'm saying? A drug, you, you, you see how dope fiends, like when people ask, how does dope fiends, you know, um, continuously go back to selling selling and using? It's like, well, it's that dopamine hit of like getting that high. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing with getting attention or getting, you know, compliments from people. It's like, oh my gosh, that feels so great. People like me, people adore me. So maybe that's why they, they choose to rent the cars out. They choose to rent the jewelry out because for them, getting that notice, getting that, you know, validation is more important. And see, I think, and I, I hope athletes and um, sports, I say athletes, athletes, I hope they don't, because a lot of athletes are falling into that in high school and stuff. And I, I hope that yes, these kids don't fall into that just to kind of, they will, they will choose the party and the TikToks, the this and this for that clout and not see that bigger picture, which is the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, whatever it is, it's like you can't – like I used to have so many friends in college who I used to tell them do not lose the focus. Like you got the best facility for the gym. You got the best facility for a basketball court. You got the best stuff for the uh, food. People will train you this and this, but you're going out. You might want to get it caught up with a uh, somebody who might say something you falsely accuse you. You might get drunk and drive. You might get DUI. You're putting yourself in every situation. If you know you can get to – the NBA or something like that, I would be so ducked off. It. I know because that's my mission. But I always tell people, like, imagine this, Obi, like, you know how much we love to lift for just us. Mm -hmm. What if you knew you were like, say you had to, they say, I need you to pull like 
eight hundred pounds, eight fifty or something. Like maybe bodyguard do that. I don't know. But if you can't, then <laughs> what they said you can make millions of dollars if you get there. But you know you're almost there by deadlifting six hundred. I think people be right there, and then they will take that clout and that fame of going out and this and this just for the pleasing other people. I'm like, it just don't. It don't make sense to me. It doesn't add up at all. Yeah. Or I mean, here's the flip side too. Is like. For a person who, let's say, they live minimalistically, so they don't buy anything flashy, they don't buy any any type of accessories, right? They live very, you know, calm, plain, but they got money in the bank. They can't give off that perception of somebody who lives a good life. And because they don't give off that perception, people kind of shun them and alienate them. I remember, like, when I was, um, when my guy and I, before pa the pandemic, when we were going out getting sections every weekend, I was seeing it like being an observer and being kind of present. I'm like, man, this shit costs a lot. It costs a lot. But then, you know, at the end of the day, when people post on their stories or when people were showing me stuff or when I get stuff back, all people are seeing is you look like you live in this great fun life. And that's what people want. They want to know. Hey, why, why, aren't you, why aren't you inviting me out? Oh, look at those women you have in your section. Oh, look at all those bars. Look at all that. So it's that perception of, yeah, that costs a lot of money. But at the end of the day, you're looking and you're giving this feel of people like you give people that FOMO of, dang, I cannot be a part of that lifestyle. So it's it's kind of like maybe there's a little bit of peer pressure to keep that perception going once you bestowed it once. And you've done it. And I that was just about to say that I'm like, I hate I feel bad for the people who are trying to get on like that and do that because you have to keep up that persona. I'm like, I'm just the person that well, I'm sorry. Y'all that was y'all got that once a year. <laughs> that's done if you don't like me for me after that point then i'm sorry i can't be buying my friends so it's like that is how i look at it. it it is people like that and it is there's so many people trying to finesse people out their way so if they do find a crash dummy doing that then it's like oh i know he's gonna he's gonna uh pay for this or i just slide in this uh section we'd be good and that's just what i feel about it so yeah, my last point, one one of the most recent examples was, remember back in the summer when we had that uh, clay pool party because of our gym? You know how many people were hitting me up because we were posting stories about that? Like, I, it's to me, it was a matter of, I'm just having fun with the homies. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been out in a while. And, like, we could do that if we wanted to. We got that in the bear. So that's no issue. But it's like, man, imagine if, back when I was doing this every weekend. And imagine if we were still living that. Imagine how different things would be but it's like at the end of the day people have different things that they value some people value going out and enjoying life and hey by all means do that but i just think sometimes people can get caught up in a rabbit hole where they don't know how to stop and, and they're trying to please other people rather than living their life on, on their own you know 100 percent. all right so with all that being said here's my question and i think this is the question that culturally we're still trying to answer in your opinion, does money buy happiness? Um, yes. And everybody's gonna disagree with me, but let me see how I break it down. Mm -hmm. Money does bring happiness. Everybody says no, because if something like this happened, would you pick this? No, you just have to know that money doesn't outweigh certain mm -hmm. things, but money does bring happiness. Like it's just like you have to know that money does not overpower a family member's death or somebody's health like yes i would rather pick that over the money but i'm saying like having money makes a lot of problems go away you can be in some serious stuff in the world you can get out of because of money if you want to go travel in the world it's because of money if you want to get a girl it's because of money if you want to have clout, it's because of anything you want, it takes money. You want a house, you need money. If you want to go get food for groceries and this and this, it takes money. So, yes, I think money brings happiness. And I 95% agree with you. I would say money enables happiness. That's that's it. It enables Okay. That's a that's a better that's a better correct term to how you said it. Money enables happiness. Yes. Yeah, because here's the thing, like the one thing I've seen, I've seen people who've had money and they're miserable, right? Now that becomes, and I think the key and the caveat to it is that I'm not saying by any stretch that money doesn't matter. Money matters immensely. If not, that's the number one thing that enables people to have good lives versus bad lives, right? But if you're not comfortable in your own skin, no matter how much money you have, that's what I was about to say. You're going to be able to be, you're always going to be messed up. You're always going to have some deficiency. You're always going to have some level of insecurity, right? If I like, for me, it's a matter of there are people who attain money because they attain money. They think that that's going to make people like them. They think that's going to make them attractive. If it's a guy, they think that's going to make people accept them. If people don't like who you are, if people don't accept who you are, if you don't accept who you are, 
no matter how much money, whether you're a hundred thousand, whether you had a million, whether you had a billion, you're just gonna it, it's just gonna you're gonna be a person with an empty ass house, empty ass life, empty ass feeling, empty ass friends, empty ass relationships. And you know, you're just gonna be able to be trying to fill it up with all the money and all the paper. But at the end of the day, you're not really gonna have nothing so of substance. That's my opinion. Yeah, that's 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 true. Cause like if you if how you got your money was on some sucker stuff, it's like you got to live your life knowing that you did it that route and now people are trying to catch on to your games. Now it's like you can't enjoy your money. So if you just be authentic from the beginning and get it, then it, it should be good, but you just can't hold that against everybody though. You know who you know who gets talked about as far as people who made their money the suck away? Six, crypto, nine. Them crypto people, man. <laughs> or they made money by just being able to figure out a cryptocurrency, but then... They, they get all this virtual money, but then they still don't know how to have, like, interaction with people, with human beings. They don't have the time. Yeah. And yeah. They end up trying to overcompensate by that, and they use their money as their way of getting accepted. It's almost like the nerd who they get that one <laughs> they get that one cute girl to finally talk to them, and they don't know how to handle it. You know what I mean? So I think at the end of the day, you have to, it, it's, it's, you have to do work on both ends. You have to become a good human being, and that takes going through trials, going through tribulation. That's where the old school is, right? You know what I'm saying? I think attaining the money should be a byproduct of the work that you put in, right? The, the sweat equity that you put in over the years of working and training. And at the end of the day, you get rewarded by your wealth, your finances. That comes at the end. You know, that's how it usually should be. And, I, and, and even if you're a person who utilizes social media, it's the same thing. But you who figure out what content to post, how you want to post it, what days, what times, figuring out the algorithm, networking, all of those things are, are skills that are valuable and those values, you know, come out to light whenever you make the money you do from your sponsorships. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Just kind of in a sense of having those like fundamentals in the beginning of your life and career and your childhood lead you to like, cause you do, like you say, you do have those nerds who, and I'm not going to, I guess you can't, I'm going to call them nerds, but like those people who wasn't as friendly or didn't have that many friends or something might get some type of like success and they don't know how to handle it. So it is best to like try to be you in the beginning. And if it does happen, then you're just, you're ready for that success. So some people get blindsided in a way. Yeah, no, I agree. Now, here's an interesting question. And I guess we'll sort of take it into our dating and relationship section of the show do you think money holds different meanings to men and women yeah all right why this is a complex answer this is but i'm gonna try to spark notes this for you so and uh, you want me to start on the woman's side or the men's side do you i'll start off on the man's side a man is just like we're majority of the time we're here to provide and we're here to protect and we're here to like I would say nurture women. Um, but um, so basically we have, I think when we think of money, we think of things like um, the housing, the making sure that the house is, the family is moving into the right position, save enough for colleges, save enough for first cars, this and this. I think a lot of men have a lot of those responsibilities. So we look at money a little differently of like, let's not go swipe this. Let's not go say like spend this. Let's not go do this. Mm-hmm. Vice versa with a woman, you can still have that because you have a lot of women who are boss girls who pay their own bills and have the same problems. But uh, some women might uh, be be stay home moms and they might just sit there with the children. They might just cool out. Yeah. Um, so they might be able to kind of look at money like this is our money or this is or she can make say say, for example, I'm still on the man side because it, it can say vice versa. This goes. For any way, it could be the woman could be the breadwinner, the man can be the breadwinner. So if the man's the breadwinner uh, and the woman isn't, it's like I think women might think of it as like they might want to do more trips, they might want to do that, which is fine. Um, it's just you gotta you gotta know how to manage your money, and I think a lot of I think men are more about um, making sure we have the dollars stretch out for a rainy day versus women want to just do. Um, they might not think as in depth in that, and not saying all women are like that, but just from my personal experience. Damn, I, I know I set you up, bro. Uh, I set you up. No, I tell the truth. You can't. This is the thing with me. I can't 
I don't ever. That's why I will. It will suck for us. Like if in the future, when things go well, is like I don't believe in cancer. Like cancel culture. Like that could have been a, a statement to be canceled. But like I just be like that's my opinion. But, I mean that's why Kanye is in the. I'll probably fall into the Kanye Kyrie uh, lane if if I was probably rich like them. Because like I wouldn't. I wouldn't be as od as them. But like I will have things to say like. That doesn't make no sense. If that doesn't make sense, I'm not going to agree with it. But in that type of platform, you have to sometimes just defer and say, even though I don't believe this, this is this and this. And I think LeBron does that a lot, which is fine, but he's just smart with it. Yeah. And see, I don't know what I don't know what lane I fall under then. If you said that you're under Kyrie and Kanye, that's a, that'd be an interesting question from someone to tell me. But nonetheless, I, I still agree with what you said. I mean, that's the thing. Like at the end of the day, men see money as okay what can it provide for the family and how can we use it to save things how can we use it to you know fix things pay for things and women largely see, see money for experiences and there's nothing wrong with that the only caveat is if it happens to be a single mother or a mother who a woman who maybe is a financial like guru like that's what she does her thing is managing money or managing accounts then okay she'll probably be more of the calculated analytical side but on average that's usually how you know people see money yeah. one side sees it for experiences and what money can do for them and then other side sees it as what can they do with the money it's not right or wrong like i'm it's not a ooh that's bad or that's good it's just it is what it is right so when you like okay prime example tiktok right if this wasn't true why do you have all these trends about like ooh target right when when they get money the first thing one wants to go do is go on a shopping trip to target or wherever I was just about to say sorry. It's a shopping spree there. Now, a guy might say, okay, I got my money now. Maybe I want to go get the new video game. If it's in the budget, you usually will see, like, if we can afford it, then I'll do it. But if not, I'm not just going to go willy nilly spending stuff. So, I mean, I agree with what you said. I mean, that's a true Because this is how I look at it for me personally. I look at it like when I get my end of my month, it's because I get paid twice every month. I get my second check at the end of the month. That's usually like bills. That's usually like going straight to all expenses, most of it. Mm -hmm. That first check of them is usually mine. But like when I say I say probably three fourths of that and just put that away. Like before I do anything, I just go put it away yep. and I just won't touch it. And then that second one, I pay all my expenses, put about half of what I have that's supposed to be for me put that away and then I got that half that like the half might be shorter than what the half was for the first one because I have to pay more expenses mm -hmm. but I still I'm I'm still putting away till savings I'm still putting this away and I'm already telling my company to pull out for my 401k I'm already putting things into my Roth so it's like so many different things that I'm that I do like that so I'm like I'm not saying every woman is not like that because there's a lot of women who are like that but it's like it just that's I think more men have to think like that because a woman is there if you if a lot of people say that that's like a woman is there to see if you can lead a family and that's just a, that's just okay it's okay if you can lead but for you to lead you have to be able to know these things you have to be, put yourself in the right situations to know how to pay things if if something breaks if something turns to this they're not going most nine times they're going to turn and look at the father what's happening dad or who's going to pay for this dad this went out dad 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 mm -hmm. So it's like, if that's the case, well, let me set myself up now so my family can be good. I think that's, we have to look at money differently. And it's not bad that your woman wants to go to Target and go on a money spree, but it's like, you, you gotta, you gotta know that you gotta make enough money to say, okay, I know my wife's going to do this. She has her own money at the same time, but even if she does need mine, fine. Just, it's, it's like, we're, we're a team and that's a hard pill to swallow is that you're a team. Yeah, so. it's hard. It's hard for people to swallow that when people don't understand, you know, how to compromise. You see, what I'm saying that's where the right. reason social studies cries. You got to compromise things, but you know, what I'm saying at the end of the day, it's all about yin and yang and balance. I mean, that's it. As long as you have balance and you understand who it is that you're with, if you know you're with someone who likes to spend frivolously and you're okay with that, you can afford it. Great, but if you're a person who doesn't like that, you don't need to be with that type of person. That's just how I look at it. So. Me, if I know my wife in the future, my girlfriend, whatever the case may be, she's on the if she's on the you know the non materialistic side, great, cool. You know what I'm saying? We'll be able to manage, and then we'll have more stuff in the budget to be able to do other things with the family. If she likes to spend frivolously, no problem. We'll be able to do that. I'm sure you just have to figure out how to budget that and how to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely.
All right. Now, here's a recent conversation that kind of brought about the negative effects of money. I, I want to know what you think about this. What do you think? How do you think money affects people's perception on finding a wife and a partner or a husband? You know, like them finding their potential mate in the future. How do you think money has changed that? Because I have my opinion, but I want to hear what you think. I've heard so many different lanes of this, um, of, of people think. So this is definitely of, off of just preference. Me, I'm at a space in my life where I was comfortable enough to be single for the rest of my life because I just was tired of women. Unfortunately, I'm not single anymore. Uh, but it's like I was at a point where I was like, I don't care if I ever get a wife or just I just want to have kids and you leave me alone. That's where I was at with it. But so if I'm okay with being single and okay with paying for everything, right? Mm -hmm. If a woman does come in my life, why should I sit there and say, I do want you to, I do want you to pick up your other end, but what if your woman is cooking, folding, this and this, and she also makes her money and she also does provide, like put things in the groceries, I mean, in the refrigerator and um, she will pay for this. She does, she has no problem paying for it. It's okay for me to say, you know what, babe, I got the mortgage. I got this. I got the bulk of the house things and just can you pay the Wi-Fi? maybe our, uh, our phone bills. And that might be like a $200 for the, your expenses for all of us. But I got the cars, I got the mortgage. Like I might do that, but like, you're still helping the kids fold their clothes, wash their clothes, make sure their rooms are clean, this and this. That's something that I suck at. And I'm if it was up to me, the house would be left like a tornado. So it's like, that's something that a woman brings that I can't bring. And I think women think that over oh, more than just that. I'm like, that's something that's so valuable to me that is like, that's looked at. So money does get looked at negative in that standpoint is because it's like, if some people will have that money and then simply just be like, you ain't doing nothing. Like I, I make all the money, you're not doing nothing. That, to me, that's just an arrogant way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's like that that woman does a lot of things because you take that away, then you might just be left with just all that money, but your house is dirty. You don't you don't know how to fold your clothes. You don't know how to cook. Like, I mean, thank God I not do all these things, but it's like if you're a man who don't know, vice versa for a woman. So it's preference. Um, how do you look at it? But I'll probably say, how is your preference? Give two different examples of how you feel about them. So I would say that based on what I've seen, it, I've seen how money evolves from a societal aspect, especially when it comes to attraction. There's a certain threshold more men have to meet. You know, you hear so much about women wanting a high value man. That's the actual term used or guy has to make 100K plus to even get in the door for her to even look in his direction. And so naturally, I think what happens is that guys get, um, guys tend to have tended to give up. You know, it's like, oh, well, if I don't make this, then women aren't going to see me as attractive. I'm like, man, I don't know about that one. But, you know, I, I just think that, again, we kind of talked about this earlier in the season about how, do people do people in general understand what it means to make six figures it's not easy i mean i had two parents who did it and then i'm on track to do it you do it i have all these people around me to do it like it's not just about who i make money and i get to sit home and do nothing you obviously aren't going to be working 40 hours a week you're going to be working around 60 so that the grind you know takes a toll on a person and then you know if that person can't be present for their family as much i mean is it worth it you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think is that's the, that's the thing. It's like, are you like when people say, "I want a man who I want a man who makes 100k"? Because I mean, I don't hear too many guys saying that they want a woman who makes six figures. I mean, I'm sure that'd be a great add-on, but you know, before that, is is she gonna be a good wife? You know what I'm saying? The conversation I had recently was with the woman who she just got a new promotion at her job, and because she got a new promotion, she's making more money. And then she's like, "Well, I'm like, so what's the next step? Like, where are you trying to evolve to next? Right?" And her, her main thing was, well, now it's about not getting too carried away with the job, but be able to still be a wife and still be a husband and still find a husband and things of that nature. So it was good to look back and forth. But I think what she was getting at, which you know I respected, was that you still have to have the quality to be a partner at the end of the day. No matter how much money you make, you can't come with the sacrifice of, you know, your home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, I'm like 50-50 on that. It's like, yeah. I've always never had an ego problem for my woman. So I never, never cared if my woman made two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. But I want my woman to re always realize that home is first. Like, yeah, you do make this, but 
like you do have kids who need you, who needs that nurturing. You do have a husband who needs you. You do have a husband who who's wanting to like like 50 50 cook you cook i cook if i if on sunday meals you doing the size i'm grilling or the, we're doing this as a team so don't forget what's at home and this the moment you forget what's at home that's when you need to start reevaluating is work important more than your family because you're I working to provide for your family i think they asked that question my bad to cut you off no you're good many people value work over their family and i think that's what the problem we're at in society mm -hmm. like, and women it's i'm so caught up in chasing the bag and i'm gonna let and you maybe this is a potential future mate of mine you know people kind of are cynical as far as oh well, what if it doesn't work and then i lose it on this money it's like yeah but what if you're able to find a wife or partner like you know oh, you know what if that does work for you i'm not saying that's what you should bank on but if you have something potentially good there is that level of maybe you need to give a little bit and invest a little bit of that maybe but maybe i'm wrong i'm just saying i just i just noticed that that's where we are society like is everybody's trying to get so caught up in chasing the bag that they forget like the reason why we get up we work is because we're trying to make ourselves our best version and then we find someone who compliments us at the end you know what i'm saying that's how it should be but unfortunately that's not where we're at yeah it's it's that's the point it's like you go to work to simply just to provide for your family anybody who tells me that they just i mean you're gonna get some people say i love what i do because i love what i do but mm -hmm. i can tell you i don't love what i do as much as i love to travel and be like financially like having financial freedom of like doing what you want like i would take that 100 percent over just sitting at my desk for eight hours and yeah. like loving what i do like i i don't care about electricity that much like or like <laughs> stuff like that so it's like <laughs> I don't care that much. So it's like, for me, it's like, if I can somehow make $300,000, I'm going to have a schedule to like, let me get up earlier in my day and get into the office so I can be done at like three or four and make sure I'm going, I know I like to I like to work out. Let me see if I can lead a, uh, the office at three thirty four. get to the gym instead of being there for three hours. Like I used to be, um, like when I was like our age now, like when I'm 30 or 40, let me see if I can fit my whole workout I do now. It's like an hour and a half, hour 45. Get home, seven, make sure I see my kids, family, make sure I spend time with there and go to sleep and do it every day. Yeah. That's something you got to put. It's going to be like more effort. But just like you said, you got to hustle a little harder. And that's going to be a different way of your grind of your hustle now. Yeah. I mean, like I, I remember like my parents, you know, their thing was um, – I remember like talking to my moms one time when I was younger and I'm like, they guys work a lot, you know, being a kid, you guys are always working. And then my mom was like, well, yeah, but the way that we, we structure our schedules is right. She's like, well, look at your dad, right? Your dad doesn't work weekends. So he can spend all that time with you guys. Not only that, he may leave work early, but then he's able to be here in the evening to like spend with y'all. So you guys get to see him during that time. I was like, yeah, that's true. And she was like, for me, there, there are certain days that I'm off and because I'm off, you know, during certain days, I'm able to spend all that time with you guys, or I'm able to cook, or I'm able to do that. So it's a matter of just being able to find time in the schedule when you do have a family, like to make to make it work. You're like you have to be present mm -hmm. with them. You know what I'm saying? It's just that understand having that level of selflessness where you're able to think about people. And like at the end of the day, this is what I've said in the past. Like men and women are better together. Cause I used to be on that same you know kind of token of all oh, man. Maybe it's not worth it to be married. I think marriage is still a good thing from the aspect it takes a burden when you find the right person. It takes a burden off you at the end of the day, right? When you find it that takes a burden. That's the best word I've heard. Burden. That's how it should be, right? If, but if if you if you get a person who has no empathy, right, then you get to that where it's like I want my partner to do everything, and I just get to be me and just keep my feet up and nah that's not going to work and you're going to run that person into the ground but when you have a person who says look i'm going to be 100 percent bought in on what I, my role is like for me i can do whatever is needed right i have certain things i excel in so my thing is just like hey i can do this in terms of being able to provide you know whether it is the house or be able to provide the foundation or provide the the tools or whatever the case and then my, my wife i know if she's going to be someone who's big on decorations cool you, you got all that no, yeah, let me make sure I pull out. Let me let me make sure I pull out all the reindeer stuff, this and this, and she need me to like go up on the uh, roof and do that. That's my. We have roles. It's like yeah, people keep forgetting. Like let's let's not make this book. That's it's still the book of how to be in a relationship. Let's not recreate it too much to the point that we're forgetting our morals and values. But Sweet. everybody got to do it their way. But 
that's the way I'm gonna do it is that old fashioned way, but put a spin on it. That's it. Just a sprinkle spin. That's it. Well, shoot. I think we as we round on to the end, I think we covered everything. I mean, shoot. Yeah. The point of all this, point of all this, I mean, is just gonna be compromise. Like I think that's if you just said that word, and I don't think you even meant to say it as much, but like, it just it stuck out. It stuck out so much to me. I'm like, all this to me is like it's compromising. It's learning how to figure out what you need, what you need to buy, you need to buy like, purchase. Like, is that need or is that a want? Um, it, then it's like the compromise of what can you do in your relationship to sustain more money, a compromise to see like who pays for what. Like, so everything to me is just compromise. Yeah, more that. And then on the other hand, it's, it's while we are talking about money, anything worth having bears a cost. Whether mm-hmm. it's your money or whether it's your sweat equity, whether it's your time, whether it's your like that's why they always say time is money, money is time. You know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. time. Like the time that you put in to get to where you are now, and the time I'm putting in trying to build my projects up. I mean, it's a lot, but the thing is we we build it and we're working towards something. A lot of people give up whenever they don't see the 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 fruits of the labor bear for you know, be buried. You know what I'm saying? My thing is like you just gotta learn to embrace the journey. You know what I'm saying when you're trying to work to be some somewhere exceptional i mean not everybody can do it so i think at the end of the day you have to do that and then when, once it comes time to find a partner find a wife find a whatever you need then at that moment you just have to compromise and find a thing that you're willing to accept and not accept and then you'll be able to be in a situation that bears benefits agree all right that'll do it for this week all right oh, that's 97 man we're almost there we're almost there 97 Yes, sir. So. All right. Now, nah, but I mean, just, you know, we appreciate all of you guys who continue to rock with us. Tune in. All we ask is you continue supporting us. Subscribe to the YouTube and, uh, you know, follow us on all your listening platforms. We're going to keep rocking with y'all. We're almost at 100 episodes and almost at the end of season two here. Season three. This is 97? Yep. Okay. So we got three more. Yes, indeed. In season three, we look to add on, keep on rolling, and it's only gonna get better from that. Oh, what you got left? No, I don't got nothing else, but just like like Obi said, we're coming on three more episodes, finish strong, and let's 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 put a let's put a different spin to it next season. Most definitely, we'll catch on next week when we out. Feet on the ground with a proof you wrong mindset. I read the go out on my sword to have my mind tap. The ones with eyes can never see, I make the blind clap. I'm bringing back that type of sound that wants to find rap. Divine rap, homie.